Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If he had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that have seen me have seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. God is good. And all the time. Psalm 100 verse 5. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. And I like to say, one day, error will come to an end. Truth will endure to all generations as long as there is God. There will be truth. But error will one day come to a fiery end along with those who persist in living their lives by error. Happy Sabbath, everyone. How do you do? By God's grace. Always by God's grace. The only thing we do not do by God's grace is sin. Are you with me? But we hear by God's grace. We speak by God's grace. We wag our fingers by God's grace. This is no joke. If you're a physiologist, you'll understand how many processes are required just to do that. And if certain microscopic parts are missing, you cannot even do that. The Bible says, in him we live and move and have our being. Always recognize God as a reason why you are alive. Pray for me while I speak. And all I want you to say is, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. And this is a very serious request. My words have no life. But Jesus says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, come on, and they are life. He did not say that about my words. And so ask God from time to time, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. That request is based on Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. And favor number three, I want you to think. Thinking is not as popular as you may suspect. It should be popular in the church. Because God says to you and to me, come now, let us reason together. Think as you listen. Let's bow our heads reverently and quietly as we pray. Dear God, it is such an honor to call you Father. It is such an honor, dear God, to assemble in your house of worship on this holy day without molestation from the authorities. We thank you we arrive without accidents, dear God, or tragedies. Lord, if we've sinned against you, forgive us, dear Father. 
Jesus died to make forgiveness available. Forgive us where we've sinned. And Father, remember the words of Christ in John 16, 13. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Send your spirit, Father, to guide us into truth. I humble myself before you, Father. I really do. I am asking you to help me to suppress the carnal nature that loves glory, loves recognition. Help me to suppress it, God, to strangle it into submission that you alone may receive the praise. Isaiah 42 verse 8 says, I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory will I not give to another. And so, Father, you take it, I pray. Speak through me, Father, literally speak through me. Take control of my mind and my mouth and my attitude. Send mighty angels to keep the enemy at bay. A double blessing on all our guests, I pray. Bless not only us, but wherever your people are worshiping you right now, bless them, dear God, with your presence. And through the mysterious agency of the Spirit, unite all our hearts as one. I pray in Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen and Amen. What's our subject? Holding hands. Luke 24, reading from verse 36. And may I ask you, no chatting during the service, please. Let me do all the chatting. Unless you have to say, Amen, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. That should be the limit of your chatting. What book did I say? What chapter? Reading from what verse? 36. When you found it, say, Amen. And I read from the King James Version of the Bible. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled, and why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hand and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. Now let's pause and go back to verse 36. I want you to observe something. It's a grammatical structure. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself. This is called in grammar, the intensive. The verse could have said, Jesus stood in the midst of them. But God wants us with no doubt that the person who appeared was Jesus Christ. And so the Bible says, this is Luke, a historian, and historians are very careful about facts. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, peace be unto you. And they were terrified and affrighted because they thought they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, why are you troubled? By the way, if you're troubled, God is asking you that right now. Why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Listen to Christ now. Behold my hands and my feet. We come across another intensive that it is what? I myself. God wants you to have no doubt. It is he that is operating in your life. Too many believers have doubts as to whether Christ is with them or not. Handle me and see, says God, or Christ, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. The creator of heaven and earth, and that's Christ. He invited the disciples to handle me. And the Greek word means to verify by touch. But it also means to verify by mental activity. You put two and two together and you come to the correct conclusion that this is for. Jesus says, handle me. Take your hand, put it in mine, handle me. What's our subject? Holding hands. Who is this person inviting the disciples to handle me? Let's keep reading. And when he thus had spoken, he showed unto them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of a honeycomb. Verse 43. And he took it and did eat before them. What we learn about Christ from this, among many things, 
having showed them his hands and his feet. In other words, showing them the marks of the crucifixion. He is trying to prove he is real. Christ is not a theological argument. Jesus Christ is a person. Jesus Christ is a real three-dimensional being. And so he says, handle me. When they didn't believe, he said, give me something to eat. Because a ghost does not eat and a ghost does not have flesh and bones. God goes the extra mile to convince us that he is real. Can you say amen? You see, God tells us, go the extra mile. But God himself goes the extra mile. He requires of us what he does. And so when touching his hands and his feet were not enough, they still doubted. He said, give me something to eat. And the Bible says he took it and did eat before them. Before them does not mean before they themselves had a chance to eat. It meant right in their presence. Let's take a look at who it was who said, handle me. Let's go to John 1. Our subject, holding hands. And this is the conclusion of a youth week. So while I'm talking to the youth, I'm talking to everyone. John chapter 1, we'll read from verse 1 our subject, holding hands. When you found it, say amen. amen. All right, most of you didn't say amen. I assume you haven't found it. John 1, reading from verse 1. Let me pause and pray again. Father, continue to exercise control over my faculties, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Notice this, the word was God. Let's read that verse again microscopically. In the beginning, whenever that was, was the word. As far back as you can take your limited mind, the word was there. And the word was with God. So as far back as you can go, the word and God had always been together. The verse goes on to say, and the word was God. So we have plurality and we have oneness. Plurality in that the word and God. Oneness in that the word was God or the word was just like God. We have two. Let's go to verse two. The same was in the beginning with God. Who is the same? The word. All things were made by him. Now we have two people, but all things were made by him. Is him singular or plural? Singular. So we have two individuals in verse 1, the word and God. We have two individuals in verse 2, the same and God. And we have one in verse 3. All things were made by him. Who is this him? And without him. Was not anything made that was made. Now verse 14 tells us, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We know now that the word in verse 1, the same in verse 2, and the him in verse 3 refers to whom? Tell me quickly, Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us Christ has always been there. There are some Adventists who believe he had a beginning. Let's go to Psalm 90. The 90th Psalm, beautiful Psalm, by the way. Teach it to your children. Psalm 90. We read from verse 1, our subject, holding hands. Do we have Psalm 90? Reading from verse 1. When you found it, say amen. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. What does he mean by all generations? As long as there have been people. Now that's very limited. God has been there. Are you with me? Which also means he had to have been there before there were people. Because he made them. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, finish the verse, thou art God. Now the Hebrew word for everlasting means something that escapes the mind. It is out of mind. You cannot conceive. 
What is the psalmist saying? As far back and beyond where your mind can go, as far into the future and beyond where your mind can go, the creator has always been there. He has been God. Now, who is that person who formed the mountains? Go to Hebrews 1. Hebrews 1, our subject holding hands. Hebrews 1. We read from verse 8. This is a very fascinating passage. This is the father speaking. And he's talking to the son and about the son. And we are allowed to eavesdrop. The father is speaking to the son and about the son. We are allowed to listen in as the father talks to the son. Verse 8 of Hebrews 1. But unto the son he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Stop. What does the father call the son? God. Since one person answered, the rest of you didn't see it. Listen to verse 8 of Hebrews 1. But unto the son he saith, thy throne, come on, O God. Is for ever and ever. What did we read in Psalm 90 verse 2? From everlasting to everlasting is equivalent to forever and ever. Verse 9. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Now listen to the Father as he continues in verse 10. How many of you have the King James Version? Read with me verse 10. Are you ready? Here we go. And thou, Lord, in the beginning, come on, has laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hand. Now, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Who is this person of whom it is said, thou art God? Jesus Christ. Don't hesitate. Jesus Christ. And this is told to us in the Old Testament. Let me say it differently. The person who said, let there be light, was Jesus Christ. The person who said on the cross, it is finished. Father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit, was the person who said, let there be light. What we have is the creator dying for what was his. Ah, no amens from you. What's wrong? Am I preaching error? Christ died for what was his. He had the right. That's why an angel could not die for us. For two reasons. The angel did not make us and the angel's life was not his own. But the life in Christ was his. And so the Bible says, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. And in verse 10, it says, And thou, Lord, in the beginning hath laid the foundations of the earth. Listen to Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Yes, it was a unified effort in the sense that Christ did it for the Father. But the person who said, let there be light, was Jesus Christ. The one of whom the Bible says from everlasting to everlasting was Jesus Christ. The one of whom the Father says, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever was and remains Jesus Christ. He laid the foundations of the earth, the Father said, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest. And they all shall wax old as a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Another support for the eternal nature of Christ. The heavens may pass, the earth may pass, but your years will never fail. Amen. Who was this person that said, handle me? Jesus Christ, tell me something else. The one who said, let there be light. Let's go to 1 John, chapter 1. Let's read from verse 1. Our subject, holding hands. 1 John, chapter 1, reading from verse 1. 
Looks like 25 to 1. Do you have 1 John 1? Reading from verse 1. Let's pray again. Holy Father, continue to be with me today. God, it doesn't take long for the carnal nature to raise its head. Push that head down there, Father. And speak through me with no interference from my flesh. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. That which was from the beginning. Notice the words very carefully. Now this is the same person who wrote in the Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word. This is the same person. Here's how he writes now. That which was from the beginning. Which we have heard. Which we have seen with our eyes. Which we have looked upon and our hands have what? handled what did Jesus say handle me the apostle now is writing I handle the God who has existed from all eternity I handled him I saw him I contemplated him because we have two words in verse one that which was from the beginning which we have heard they heard God which we've seen with our eyes and we've looked upon. Now, there are two different things. To see with the eye is to look. To look upon is to contemplate. So you see me with your eyes, but you're also contemplating me. And our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. He calls him that eternal life. He calls him life. John says, that God who existed before anything else existed. I saw him. I held him. I heard him. And I observed him. And of all the 12 disciples, I alone put my head on his chest. At the Last Supper. I believe you're listening, you're nodding your heads. Do you understand what the Bible is teaching us? The great God of the universe came to this earth in the person of his son. People saw him. This is the God all heathen nations want to worship now they worship him through the son which is wrong you see the ultimate desire of the heart is to reach god but we do it through the sun and they worship the trees and they worship the rivers and they worship whatever else they worship rocks but what they're searching for is that ultimate power that can direct their lives and john says i saw him and i sat with him and i rode in a boat with him and i held his hand and i leaned on his breast and I considered his words. This God says to you, my young brother, let's hold hands and walk through life. A lot of people are depressed because they feel alone, unloved, uncared for. And there's a God in heaven. Now, we need one another, yes. But the foundation of our mental health should be God. Not people on whom you cannot depend. Are you following me? Are ah, you not listening? I'm talking to myself. Let me say it again. The foundation of mental health for the Christian is not Prozac. Let me say clearly, quickly, certain medications have their place. Don't misunderstand me. But the foundation of our mental peace is God. The realization that my life is led, directed, controlled by the power that runs the universe. Yes. You need to understand. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 27 verse 10, just listen. When my mother and my father forsake me. Finish the verse. Then the Lord will take me up. Well, if mother and father can forsake you, friends will forsake you. Who does not forsake you? Tell me, God, the one who became like you, flesh and blood. Let's find out something else about this God. Go back to John 1. This God who made heaven and earth. And who died on the cross. John 1. 
verse 1, or from verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. Read it with me, you know it. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now, notice verse 4 carefully. In him was what? Life. Stop. Now, let's go beyond in him was life. We need to understand it is not so much in him was life. He himself is life. But let's read verse 4 in its entirety. In him was life, come on, and the life was the light of man. Do not allow that to lead you to think that the life in Christ is the life only in human beings. All life is in Christ. The life of human beings, the life of birds, the life of animals, the life of fish, the life of plants. There is no life outside of Jesus Christ. Amen. Are these things real? They're real. You know where they get their life from? Tell me quickly. Jesus Christ. Don't depend on the biology department of the University of, what's this place called? Wolverhampton. To tell you that. That life in that leaf is from God. Ellen White writes in Bible Commentary, Volume 1, page 1081, paragraph 3, I believe it is. God has given his life to the trees and vines of his creation. It does not mean God lives in that leaf. It simply means that leaf cannot live disconnected from God. Amen. That bird flies because its life is preserved by God. And if we will live this way all day, we would be singing words of praise and thanks to God. When you walk up the stairs in your house, you thank God. When you rise in the morning, you thank God. When you go to the bathroom and no one helps you, you thank God. In him we live and move. I'm talking about Jesus Christ who upholds all things by the word of his power. Hebrews 1 verse uh, 3. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse, verse 5, verse 7. He upholds all things. He preserves all things. Colossians 1, 7. By him all things consist. The Bible says in him was life. Let's go to John 14. We read verse 6. We read it before. Our subject holding hands. We're talking about Jesus. And there's no more important subject in the Bible than Jesus. And nobody said amen. Well, two people. You're a tough congregation. John 14, verse 6. Do you have that? It's a popular verse. Say it with me. Jesus saith unto him what? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Stop. Jesus did not say, I have the way. I have the truth. I have the life. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Let's go to 1 John, chapter 5, we read from verse 11. 1 John, chapter 5, reading from verse 11. Towards the back of the Bible, you should find that quickly. It's a quarter to one, roughly. Read with me. And this is the record that God... Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Take that off. Please, take it off, take it off. Blessings upon you. Open your Bible and read your Bible. Will all genuine Christians say amen? Open your Bible and read your Bible. Don't let me get off on one of my soap boxes because you'll be here till five. I have nothing against technology. Are you following me? This has its place. But this has a dark side. When I was a boy, we didn't have this. People found the books of the Bible like that. Today, we can't do that. Because the screen has replaced our minds. This has replaced our minds. So the things you worked out in your head, now you go to the phone. Open the Bible at least. And read for yourself. 
Let's go first John chapter 5 verse 11. What does the Bible say? You tell me. And this is the record that God hath given to us. What? Eternal life. Come on. And this life is in his son. Now let's read verse 12. He that hath the son. Come on. Stop. Mm -hmm. All right. Finish it. And he that hath not the son of God hath not life. Jesus himself is life. Are you sick? Ask yourself the question, have I given my life to Jesus completely? Listen to what Ella White writes. Let the mind become intelligent and the will be placed on the Lord's side. And there will be a wonderful improvement in the physical health. Some of us are sick because we're not 100% surrendered to God. You see, Christ is life. Recommit your life to Christ. 100%. See what happens to your health. In him was life. John 1, 4, the life was the light of men. God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. My question for you, my brothers and sisters, do you have Christ as the source of your life? Christ object, uh, thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, page 61, paragraph 2. What did I say? Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, page 61, paragraph 2. God is the fountain of life. And we can have life only as we are in communion with him. Listen carefully. Separated from God, existence may be ours for a little while, but we do not possess life. Someone disconnected from God is existing, not living. And so 1, Peter, 1 Timothy 5, 6 says, She that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. The life you and I need to survive this world and to qualify us for place in God's kingdom is only possible through a union with the life giver. That's Jesus Christ. Go with me to John 11. John 11. We're finding out that this person who said, handle me, was the one who made heaven and earth. The one who said, handle me, is the one who said, it is finished. The one who made heaven and earth. We're taking a look at him now. John 11, we read from verse 21. John is a beautiful gospel. Read it sometime. Beautiful gospel. Do you have John 11 from verse 21? Let me pray. Holy Father. As I continue to talk about your son, continue to control my mind and my mouth through the agency of your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Then said Martha to Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. She's saying, if you were present, he wouldn't have died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask God, he will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again at the, in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, read verse 25 with me now, I am the resurrection and the life stop. Resurrection is not just an event. In some mysterious way, the resurrection is a person. I am the resurrection. Go to John 14. Let's read verse 18 and 19. This is Christ comforting his disciples. Chapter 14 of John is almost all red letters. Chapter 15, almost all red letters. Chapter 16, most red. Chapter 17, almost all. Right after that, 18, he's in Gethsemane. So these are the final words of Christ. Read verse 18. What does that say? I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Now carefully, verse 19. What does that say? 
Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. Come on, but ye see me. Finish that verse. Because I live, uh -huh. ye shall live also. He is the resurrection. Christ is life. Christ is the creator. Christ is the resurrection. Christ is the one of whom the psalmist says, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. And he says to you and to me, hold my hand and let's walk together. This is not symbolic. This is literal. And you're saying to me, well, how can it be literal when Jesus is in heaven? It is literal through faith in his word. The word is not symbolic. When you accept it by faith, it becomes a reality in your life. So when Jesus says, handle me and see, we handle him through the word. And he says to you, take my hand and let us walk through life. Handle me, but keep this in mind. Go to Amos chapter 3. Our subject, holding hands. And people love to walk holding hands. I see it all the time, airports and wherever else. Holding hands on TV. And then six months later, they divorced it's not holding hands that keep you together. It's the ring around your heart, not the one on your finger. All right. What book did I say? What chapter? Reading verse 3. Read it with me. What does that say? Can two walk together except they be agreed? Now, Jesus said, I am the way. A way is how you walk. The Bible says the only way two people can walk together, they must agree. Amen. I'm coming to the downslope of the message. Let's look at me and let's look at God. And we're supposed to walk together. Romans 8, 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Because it is, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. That's me. Jeremiah 79, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, that's me. Jeremiah 13, 23, can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spot? Then me also do good that are accustomed to do evil, that's me. Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Job 40, verse 4, that's me. Now, holy, just, good, righteous, sinless, perfect. Who is that? God. Here is holy, just, right, sinless, perfect. And here is vile, contemptuous, deceitful, no good. How can these two walk together? One of the two has to change. Here's what the Bible says about God. Malachi 3.6, I am the Lord. <laughs> now you come to the intelligent conclusion. <laughs> come on. You have to change. Remember, God wants to walk with you. But we must agree. Isaiah 55 verse 8. Listen carefully. You know it. For my thoughts... And not your thoughts, neither are your ways, my ways, saith the Lord. Now here's how different God's mind is from ours. For as the heavens are higher than the earth. Now how high is that? So are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now if there is such light years of difference between the way God thinks and the way we think, and we have to walk together, we have to undergo a radical change. Many of us think God is just like we are. Go to Psalm 50. Psalm 50. Psalm 50. In the new world, we'll have air conditioning. It'll be nice and cool. An even temperature all over the new world. No sweaty preachers. All right, Psalm 50. We shall read from verse... 
18. Christ is, of course, criticizing his people. You have verse 18 of Psalm 50. You have the King James Version. Read with me. What is it saying? When thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him. Stop. There are some people, they don't steal, but they have nothing against thieves. And so in God's eyes, you're no different. Listen to me carefully. There are some people who say, if you want to live with a man, that's your business. I don't criticize you. It's not my choice, but if you want to do that, that's fine. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Sin must bother you, the sin in your life, and the sin in everyone's life should bother you. I'm not saying you're a, 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 a judge. I'm not saying that. Or a professional critic. I'm simply saying sin should bother the child of God wherever that sin is in me or outside. And so when thou sawest the thief, thou consentest with him. Read verse 19. Thou what? Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Next verse. What does that say? Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, and slanderest thy own mother's son. And some churches do that, but not this church. Now listen to verse 21 carefully. Read with me. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Now carefully, thou thoughtest I was altogether such a one as thyself. You think I'm like you. Because I don't send a flood every time you steal my tithe. You think I don't see, and I don't notice. You're blind to the fact that I'm long-suffering. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as that. God is not like we are. Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie. He is not the way we are. My thoughts are not your thoughts. But he has devised a way to change our minds to correspond with his. And so the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I'm coming to the close, not just the mind of Christ. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1. Let's read verse 4. We just found out from Philippians 2, 5, we must have the mind of Christ. He's qualifying us to walk with him so he and I can agree. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Do you have that? It's nice to hear the sound of pages of the Bible turning in a church. There are no pages on the phone. All right, 2 Peter 1, verse 4, do you have that? Read with me, what does it say? Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these, come on, ye might be what? Partakers of what? The divine nature stop. In Philippians 2, 5, we must have the mind of Christ. 2 Peter 1, 4, we must be partakers of the divine nature. Go to Hebrews 12. Verse 10. Hebrews 12, verse 10. Do you have that? We were in 2 Peter. You come forward. Past 1 Peter, James, then Hebrews. 12, 10. When you found it, say amen. amen. Read with me. What does that say? Furthermore, we have had. Hebrews 12, 10. What does that say? For they verily, for a few days, yes, chasing us, come on, after their own pleasure. Stop. Those are parents chastening their children. For their own pleasure sometimes. Keep reading. But he, for our prophet, keep reading, that we might be partakers. Come on. Ah, three things. Philippians 2, 5, we must have what? The mind of Christ. 2 Peter 1 verse 4, we must partake of the divine nature. And Hebrews 12, 10, we must be partakers of his holiness. Now, when that's the case, he and we, finish my words, can walk together. And who is he? Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, God wants to hold your hand like two lovers walking through St. James Park or something. Walking with you. In order for that to be a reality, 
you must bring yourself in line with God's standards. My young son, my young brother, my young sister, the creator of heaven and earth wants to walk with you. He wants to associate with you, hang out with you to use a secular expression in a pulpit. He wants to hang out with you. You know, we have friends we love to associate with. God wants to be that person. So that you can tell him your troubles, your stresses, your aches. He will understand in a way your friends cannot. And even if your friends understand, they can do nothing. Why is it Christ can understand? For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Jesus Christ took human form. He became one of us so that he might understand, feel temptation, and ultimately experience death. When he rose, he took that human flesh with him. Glorified, but still human flesh. And so the Bible says, there's one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. That was written about 20 years after Jesus Christ went back. Colossians 2 verse 9, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. There is someone who understands you more than your parents. That's Jesus. Because Christ has always been, because he is, and he always will be, he can cover all age groups. Are you 90? Jesus was 90. He's been from everlasting to everlasting. Are you 17? In his humanity, Christ was 17. Are you 21 considering establishing your home? Jesus Christ was 21. What am I saying? Jesus Christ was six months. Is there a baby around here? No. This lady who sang is carrying a lovely little burden. Not burden, but a, a precious... Where is she? No, there was a lady who sang the special music. Where'd she go? No, no, no. The lady who sang the special music before I stood up. Don't confuse your members. But she's carrying a child. Christ was that. When that child is born, she'll breastfeed the child. Mary breastfed Jesus. You're not listening to me. Let me say this. Mary breastfed God. And a couple hours later, she changed God's diaper. Now, did he become flesh? Yes. But listen to me. The one who said, let there be light, is the one who nursed at the breast of Mary. How can you come any closer to humanity than to come through the womb? You know, Christ came to the earth in human form before he came in Bethlehem. In Genesis 18, he came to Abraham with two servants or two angels. But he came in human form, not in human nature. Are you with me? Because he was not born. Are you following me? No, you're not following me. When Christ came to Abraham in Genesis 18, he came in human form, not human nature. To come with the nature, he had to come through a woman. That happened in um, the Gospels. There's a God who's from everlasting to everlasting. You answer this for me. If God can make the universe and sustain it, hmm, can he provide housing for you? Listen to Genesis chapter 2 verse 10. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison. That is it which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There's delium and the onyx stone. Precious stones. Wealth. Question for you. Can God supply your financial needs? Yes. Genesis 1.29. Behold, I've given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth. 
And every tree into which is a fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat. Can God provide you with food? Yes. And the Lord God took the man, and God put Adam into a deep sleep, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Can God find you a wife? Yes. Can God find you a man? Yes. But let him find the man. And the woman. What am I saying? God can supply your needs. But he wants you to be one with him. Now God is so good, he blesses the sinners. Listen to Matthew 5, 45. That he may be the children of your father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to rise, come on, on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Every day I pray for unbelievers. I pray for unbelievers. And I say, Father, I am placing them under the protection of Matthew 5, 45. He caused, he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good father. There's a prostitute in London. Please remember Matthew 5.45. And spare her till she comes to know Jesus. There's a drunkard in a gutter somewhere, father. Remember Matthew 5.45. Keep your hand over him until he has a chance to say yes to Jesus Christ. And so God blesses the unbeliever. If God can bless the unbeliever. Ah. What will God do for you? This was the argument of Jesus. If God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? Finish the verse. Oh, ye. Young man, you need tuition. Does Jesus know that? What do you call those machines where you punch a card and some money comes out? What do you call it? ATM, okay, that's what we call it across the, the ocean. God is not an ATM machine. When you have an occasional need, you conveniently stick a card in, get your money and say bye, and you leave. No, God is not an ATM machine. God is the senior partner in the business of your life. And so today, I invite you to put your hand in the hand of Jesus. Accept his invitation. What did he say? Handle me. Put your hand in my hand. And let's walk together in a state of agreement. He understands your problems. He understands your fears. He understands whatever troubles you. Jesus Christ understands. We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are. The only difference was he never sinned. Bring your stresses to Christ. Casting all your cares upon him. Why? For he careth for you. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. When he said, come unto me, all ye that labor, White, black, Indian, Asian, British, Nigerian, Canadian, male, female, short, tall, employed, unemployed, educated, not so educated, rich, poor. Jesus says what? Come. Because all these people have the same problem. Three letters spell the word sin. And they all need the same solution. Five letters spell the word Jesus. And so today, Jesus says, come. You don't even have to move physically to come to Christ. Now let me finish up quickly. You see, Revelation 3 verse 20 says, Behold, I stand where? At the door. Now, to stand at someone's door, where do you have to be? The only thing keeping you from inside is a thin piece of wood called the door. Christ has come this far in his humanity. He knocks. He does not send a text long distance message. He comes through the spirit and he knocks. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door. The devil kicks it down. Christ waits for an invitation. 
My brother, my sister, if you hear that knocking on the door of your heart, open the door. Let Christ come in. Let him change the trajectory of your life. Let him bring hope into your soul. Let him put a brightness in your eyes as you look towards the future. Let Jesus be the hand that sustains you. And let this verse be the chorus in your heart every day. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand. Now the right hand is the hand of power. When the disciples fished and found nothing, Jesus said, cast your nets on the right side of the boat. When the angel appeared to Zacharias, the father to be of John the Baptist, he was standing on the right side of the altar. When Jesus ascended, he sat down where? On the right hand of the father. Jesus said, I will uphold you with what? The right hand of my righteousness. 